Have you guys ever found yourself wanting to make some picture frames for something, but you don't have a great way to cut the miters, so you've been putting it off? Well, in this episode, I'm going to show you a really easy way to make frames that require no miter cuts at all. We're going to use a simple half lap joint to make some cool frames. I'm going to make them for these LPs that I have, but you can make it any size, whatever you need for pictures, posters, whatever fits your need. Also, we're going to use some spent bullet casings to reinforce the joints instead of a traditional dowel. So stick around, check it out, this is gonna be fun. So here's the piece of barn board that I'm gonna begin with. You can see right here, it's got a really bad bow, pretty much from this knot on. So I believe if I trim this bowed piece off, I'm gonna be able to get all of my parts out of this end, then I'll be able to square up one side on the jointer and rip everything down to its final size. So now I have my four side pieces all cut to length. This is going to be a square frame, so these are all cut to the exact same size. And the length that I'm using is the exact same length that I would use if I was going to cut these at a miter. Now if you're making a different size frame, of course your dimensions will be different, but make your length the same that you would use if you're going to miter them. Since we're not going to miter these, we can now begin working on the joint. What we're going to use is basically a half lap joint. That's where we're going to remove half of the piece here, half of the piece here. They will overlap and fit nice and square and flush. At least, that's the goal. <laughs> I'm going to use the crosscut sled to make these cuts. First, I'll raise the blade to half the thickness of the piece. Then I'll set up a stop block to keep my cuts consistent. Now I can start cutting the half lap joint by making multiple passes over the blade. It's important to cut these on the right side of the pieces, so if you have to mark them to make sure you keep them straight, go ahead and do that. And here you can see how the joint's gonna fit together. Now I just have to repeat that process for the remaining three corners. One of the cool things about a half lap joint is that as long as you make your cuts nice and square, when you clamp everything together, this is gonna be a self squaring. So you don't have to worry a whole lot about everything being nice and square. We're just gonna let this dry for a little while and then we'll move on. Now I use a rabbiting bit in my router table to route a rabbit along the inside edge. This will accept the glass as well as the picture. Since this leaves rounded corners, we need to take a few minutes and square those up with a chisel. So now I'm just going to take a few minutes, do a little bit of hand sanding, basically just breaking the edges, making sure there's no splinters or sharp corners. But I want to be careful to not remove all of this kind of aged barnwood look. I want to try to keep what I can of that. So now really, if you wanted to stop right here, you could add your glass a hanger and basically be done with this, but I want to add a little decorative detail which will also help tie in these half lap joints. Now you can reinforce these with a lot of different ways. You could use a spline, you could use dowels. The method I'm going to use is very similar to dowels except instead of dowels we're going to use some empty shell casings that a friend of mine gave me. My buddy Jim gave me a whole bunch of these shell casings and I think they're going to look really cool if we set those down in there kind of like a dowel 
It's gonna help reinforce the joint, plus give it really a cool look. Now you can see right away that these are too long. If I drill a hole even all the way through, there's just too much length here. So we need to shorten those up. I don't wanna to have to drill all the way through. To do that, I've just drilled a hole in a piece of plywood. That'll press all the way through there and we can shorten them up on the belt grinder. can begin drilling the holes for the shell casings. First I'm going to drill a shallow recess that's the same size as the rim of the casing. Then I'll switch to a smaller bit and drill a hole for the rest of the casing to fit in. This is going to allow the casing to fit nice and flush with the piece. Just mixing up a little bit of two-part epoxy. We're gonna epoxy in those shell casings. It's gonna work great. In order to get them sitting nice and flush, I ended up having to use a punch just to tap them down in a little bit farther. With that epoxy dry, these joints are super reinforced. There's no way they're coming apart. Plus, really, I just like the look of those shell casings on there. Now I believe we are ready for some finish. The finish I'm gonna use is a homebrew finish consisting of mineral spirits, boiled linseed oil, and wipe-on polyurethane. I've got a short video that I made about mixing up this batch. I'll put a link down below in the description if you wanna check out exactly how I did it, but it's really simple to make, really simple to use. We're just gonna wipe this on, let it dry, bam, done. While that finish dries, I can work on cutting the glass. This is just standard glass that I picked up at the hardware store. If you've never cut glass before, it's really not that hard. All you need is a nice straight edge and a simple glass cutter. The worst part about the whole process is the horrible screeching noise it makes when you score it. After you've scored your glass, you just put a piece of wood under where you need it to break and give it a light press and it'll snap right on the score. And there's our piece. The last thing I need to do is to install this little sawtooth hanger. All I need to do is find the center of the frame. We can locate the hanger there and install it with the little nails that are included. I like to use a little tack hammer and a pair of needle nose pliers, the pliers to hold the little nail. That way when you tap it, you're not hitting your finger because it's so small. Plus this doesn't hurt quite as bad when you do hit your finger because it is a little bit smaller. Now I'll just wipe all my grimy fingerprints off the glass before we pop it in the frame. I'm just going to use a piece of cardboard as the backer. This is just a piece of corrugated that I cut off from the packaging that the glass was in. You can really use anything. You can use hardboard. They make special backing material, but for this, I'm just going to use cardboard. It's going to work just fine. And there we go. Ready to hang on the wall. That looks really cool. There you have it guys, a really easy way 
to make a picture frame requires no miters at all, just some simple half lap joints. I really like the look of the shell casings that we used as dowels. This project is done. Let me know down in the comments what you thought. Thanks a lot for watching guys. We'll see you next time. Cut some glass and probably my fingers. Hopefully not. That makes a horrible sound.